Hello, and welcome to this introduction of the Kemp Ingress Controller for Kubernetes. The Kemp Ingress Controller is now part of the Technical Preview Program and can be deployed in two different modes, Service Mode or Ingress Mode. This Getting Started demonstration will focus on Service Mode, which is a unique operating mode allowing NetOps teams, to give the app dev teams, self-service publishing of their application with constrained API access. In this demo, I'm going to use the Azure Quick Start Guide found at the following link to get an AKS cluster up and running and deploying a sample application. The Quick Start will create a new resource group in a given region, uh, I'll use East US, and will include a new VNet, network security group, and of course, the AKS cluster. A Kemp Loadmaster will then be deployed through the Azure Marketplace, or scripted, using the same region, resource group, VNet, NSG, uh, to publish that AKS service. Once the Loadmaster is configured with Kubernetes and users begin accessing the service, the Loadmaster will dynamically adapt to the scale-out, scale-in nature of Kubernetes. So the first step is to get that AKS Kubernetes cluster deployed in Azure. So I'm logged into the Azure portal, and I could go ahead and deploy the cluster from here, but instead I'm going to just follow that quick start guide and use the Azure Cloud Shell. So creating the resource group in this demo, it's called kick-rg, and once again in the East US region. Next I need to create the AKS cluster, and I'm just going to use a, a node count of one. Now this step is going to take several minutes, so I'm just going to pause here, and then I'll come back once it's complete. Okay, now we're back, and now that the AKS deployment is complete, I can go ahead and connect to it to complete the configuration. So using the kube control or kube cuddle or kube CTL, and we can leave all that for a, a debate for another time, uh, I can confirm things are healthy with doing a get nodes. So the AKS cluster is ready, so now it's time to uh, deploy that sample app. I've copied this YAML file from the quick start guide and just made a few minor changes. Uh, the app has two deployments, uh, a backend app called uh, Azure Vote Back, which is a Redis image, and it has the associated service that will make this deployment available on port 6379. At the bottom, I have the front-end app, which there's only going to be one replica or pod deployed to support this app to start off with. So what I've done is I've removed the service that will make this front-end deployment available to the Loadmaster for publishing to the outside world. That one we'll do after we deploy the Loadmaster. So with this, I'm just going to copy it all out and go back to the Azure Cloud Shell. And I'm going to create a new file by just typing vi azure-vote.yaml. And I'll just go ahead and copy it right in there. Oh, okay, without hitting insert, I think I may have lost the A in API. So I'll just go and just add that back in. Okay, everything else I think looks good, uh, so I'll just uh, go ahead and hit, hit Escape and do a Save and Close. Now I just need to apply this YAML to Kubernetes. Okay, so now it's time to uh, spin up the Loadmaster, and with that we're just going to do a manual deployment through the marketplace, but you know, using ARM templates or scripting uh, is certainly an option. So we'll go ahead and search for Kemp and select the Loadmaster. For this demo, I'm just going to select the trial slash the, the BYOL SKU uh, and click Create. For starters, we have to add this Loadmaster into the same resource group as the VNet. That VNet got created into a new resource group that AKS creates. It'll have an MC underscore and then the resource group name, which uh, ours is kick-rg, then the AKS cluster in the region. Next, I will just give the Loadmaster a name and make sure that I'm in the same region, again, that East US. I'm just going to go ahead and update the size since I think 14 gig of memory is a bit overkill for this demo. And finally, I'll give the BAL account a password. I'll keep the defaults for the disks. On to networking. I just need to confirm that we're connecting uh, to the AKS VNet and subnet. And I'm going to go ahead and keep that new public IP. 
And then I'm just going to add this machine to the same NSG, uh, which that AKS uh, clusters in. For the rest, I'm just going to keep the defaults and then finally create. This also takes a couple of minutes, so I'll just go ahead and pause again and come back once complete. Okay, now that Loadmaster deployment is complete, I just need to go into the network security group and add a few inbound rules. Uh, one for the Loadmaster management on 8443, and then I'm going to open up port 80 for publishing our AKS app to the outside world. So I'll go ahead and first do port 8443 uh, for management. Fill in these fields. And then go back and do port 80. Uh, just again, updating those fields for port 80. Okay, now that we have both of those ports open in our inbound um, NSG rules, I can just go ahead and uh, grab that public IP address of the Loadmaster and connect to it via my browser over port 8443. I'll accept the EULA. Go ahead and enter my Kemp ID and password. And if you don't have a Kemp ID, you can always click the link uh, here to create one. And select the VLM 5000 trial license. I'll go ahead and accept the allow call home. And then log in with my BAL account and password I provided earlier. For this next step, you'll need to download the Kubernetes add-ons for Loadmaster from the Kemp website. So I provided that link on both the first slide and then the last slide in this video. So once you have them, uh, navigating to the system configuration and system administration, you can select update software. And under installed add-on packages, select the choose file. And then first let's select the Kubernetes add-on and click install add-on package. And then hit okay on that uh, reboot message and then click that choose file again and now select the ingress add-on and once again we can go ahead and hit OK on that reboot and now we can actually click the system reboot and then click reboot. We'll take one last quick pause while this Loadmaster reboots and then we'll come back and finish this up. Okay we're back and ready to get this Loadmaster uh, talking to Kubernetes. So we just need to provide the Loadmaster with the kubeconfig file. To get that, I just need to jump back into the uh, Azure Cloud Shell and select Download. Now, half of the path is already provided, so I just need to go ahead and add the .kube forward slash config. And now that that's downloaded, I'll jump back to the Loadmaster. Go ahead and select that uh, config file and click install. Okay, now it's time to create the virtual service to publish our app to the outside world. So under virtual services, I'll select add new. I'll go ahead and keep that default uh, virtual IP address and enter port 80 and I'll give it a friendly name and click add this virtual service. The one thing we need to note is the ID number of the virtual service. Since this is the first and only VS we created, uh, we're presented with one. We can leave most of the defaults, but we just need to update the health checking from head to get. With the virtual service now created, but showing in a down state, this is where we need to create that service uh, for the front end app in Kubernetes to complete the configuration. So jumping back to our YAML file for the service, there are a few fields that are required for this communication between Kubernetes and, and Loadmaster. First is the labels, which we need to create one called KempLB with a colon and set it to enabled. And then next, annotations. So we need to set it to that virtual service ID we captured before, which in our case is 1. And in the specs, we have the type as cluster IP, and the port is 80. And then we're selecting that Azure Vote front as the uh, app that we want to deploy from our earlier YAML file. So we'll get and copy this one. Go back to the Azure Cloud Shell. Do a vi kemp-service.yaml. 
This time I'll click insert and then I'll go ahead and paste it in. So everything looks good. I'll do an escape and a colon WQ to save and close. Finally, I just need to apply this YAML to Kubernetes. Doing a get service, we see that our Azure vote back and now our Kemp Kubernetes preview service are ready to go. Now if we check out the Loadmaster in the virtual service we created, it, we see it's now changed to up and doing a refresh, we see that our real server or pods in this case are added. Since we've opened a port 80 on the network security group, I can go ahead and select the public IP. I'll open up a new tab and uh, over HTTP, drop this IP address in, and now we have access to our Azure voting app. So again, this is all great, but what if we need to scale as we said before? So if we go back to the Azure Cloud Shell, and I'll go ahead and scale this thing out, uh, scale out the front end app to four replicas instead of the default one that we put in there earlier. So now if I go ahead and apply that, I go back to the Loadmaster, and Loadmaster automatically detected that that change happened, and now we have four real servers listed in the virtual service. And then in the event, we need to scale back down. We'll go ahead and uh, apply this to Replica 2, and apply that, go back to the Loadmaster, and we see that it brought it back down to two. With this getting started demo, I invite you to visit Kemp.ax and download the Kubernetes add-ons to publish your apps with that always-on application experience expected by your organization. Thanks for watching.